welcome back to the Ebony Odyssey. My name is Jermaine Golong, and I am a servant of the Most High God. I really appreciate you for coming along. And as always, enjoy the journey. How to do it. The title of this message is How to Do It. And I get this message because I was uh, sitting with the family as usual, reading the word. And we were going through First Kings, and we were in chapter 3. And the verses that stood out to me that tonight was 8 and 9. And it says, And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people, that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart, to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people. And the background of this story is, you know, it's it's King Solomon just inheriting the throne and he's praying out to God and trying to figure out how he should be and how uh, he should serve his people as king. And how to do it means, you know, how do we do this life when we come All the way to Africa, you know, if you don't want to be around people, this probably ain't the place to come. Because here, you know, at least in East Africa where I am currently, you know, people are close to you. They bump you, they touch you, they rub past you. And if you are afraid to be touched, this won't be the place for you. But how to do it? You have to be in the midst of the people. That's exactly how uh, Solomon learned how to govern his people, how to have understanding of his people. And guess what? This people that's here in Africa is great and and vast. You know, it's many different cultures, tribes, uh, different ways, you know, different thoughts, religions. Uh, It's different uh, philosophies of how to conduct their selves. Um, So, you know, in order to understand this people, be in the midst. You can't get behind walls and expect to build. You have to build relationships with people out in the public, you know, for people to see. Because I'm always out here talking to, you know, a friend of mine today, you know, he's asked, man, how did you do this? How did you learn this? Because you have to be here. You got to be in. You got to immerse yourself. You know, a lot of people can talk a good game, but they're on the fringes. You know, these are the same people that build superficial relationships that don't go anywhere. They have no meat to them, you know, so when you have conversations with them, it's kind of one-sided because they have no story. They have depth to any of the conversations besides, hey, how you doing? You know, you have to be able to go deeper with people and, and draw out that which is in their heart, you know. Oh, gosh, it's a proverb that I love. It's like the heart of a man is like a deep well. And and those that know how to dig or to draw it out, find it. I'm not quoting it verbatim, but, you know, I was explained this by uh, a good congregation in Williamsburg uh, that helped me understand that, you know. And being here in Africa now, you know, I understand what it takes to dig a well. I just had one dug behind my house and it seemed like you fall in it. You're you're a certain doom. It's your demise. It's so deep. It's so hard. It was so much effort put into it. And that's the heart of a man. You have to dig down deep and think about the heart of the people. You know, you have to get in there. And granted, you can't have a deep relationship with everybody you come in contact with. But it's it's a certain spirit that's on people that you know you should take this conversation a little farther. You should take this journey a little farther with people. And, you know, it's just my understanding as I'm living here, as I'm growing here, as I meet people from back in the States. And I meet people that are native to Tanzania, native to Africa, native to, you know, certain tribes, uh, certain areas. They're native to this uh, place. And guess what I want to be? I want to blend in as almost as if I'm one of the natives. My speech is getting better. You know, my conversation, my day to day conversation of asking people, how are they doing? How is their family? You know, what, what else is going on with you? And me trying to put remembrance to those things. You know, it's it's hey man, it's something to be here, man. But it's the it takes all that you have to be here because it's an endless cycle of learning, adapting um, and sharing uh, the knowledge that you have with others that's around you to help them uh, better their situation. You know, 
it frustrates me all the time, you know, to give out information and you see people still, you know, take the wrong steps. But, you know, everybody has their own journey and you got to let people go their own way, man. But it's it's hard. This life is hard. You know, it ain't for everybody because it requires so much effort. You know, this is not something that, you know, you can do with your eyes closed. You have to have both eyes open and you have to have or be 10 toes down in it, as we say, you know. And so when somebody carves the path, man, you have to be ready to walk in those footsteps, especially if they're following the Lord. You see how easy that is because the Lord has put these footsteps out here. He has carved that path. And if we can follow behind him and create a way where other people can follow behind us, we're walking in the Lord's footsteps, not to hurt, not to hinder, not to misuse, you know what I'm saying, to cause mistrust, you know, but it's to build and grow and seek that what's above you and not that which is below you. You know, it's crazy, man. You know, I can look back and I can see people, you know, they cling to things that's nothing but death. You know, it's hard to cling to life. Most people cling to death. You know, they don't want to they don't want to move forward. You know, they're happy and they're complacent in where they are. Don't let this be you. I don't want to go on long tonight. But, you know, that was just on my heart. How King Solomon, one of the greatest, wisest kings of all time. He was in the midst of the people to understand his people and to judge accordingly for his people because you have a great nation of people around you. And you see that when you get here. You know, you might, being here, you might catch somebody from Kenya. You might catch somebody from Nigeria. You might catch somebody from South Africa, America, you know, Europe, you know, all over Asia, the Philippines. You have all these people. It's it's still like the Americas, like in a melting pot, but you don't have as much poison in the pot. It's fresh ingredients, raw ingredients, and all you have to do is put a little season to it to get it to, to taste the way you want it, to move the way you want it, to be the way you want it. But hey, family, I appreciate you for coming along, and as always, enjoy the journey.